Well, good evening, folks. Sorry we couldn't get together this morning. Uh, hope you were able to stay safe and off the roads this morning, and it's not so bad now that the rains come. Uh, but the elders thought that um, it was wise to stay in this morning. And hey, if we've learned anything the last ten months, it's that. Uh, that we can survive not assembling face to face and inside of a building. Uh, we can still worship our God and hope you've been able to do that and hope this uh, little broadcast will be a help to you as well. So uh, just a couple of things, you know, I encourage you to, to check your email and stay up on our announcements and, and the stuff that was in the newsletter um, this morning. It's important. And recent emails about community service possibilities, if you're interested in some of those and helping, uh, let us know in the office and we will certainly get you uh, connected with, with the right people. So again, hope you're well and, and having a good day. And what I wanted to do uh, this evening was just uh, offer a little bit, I guess, of a communion meditation, although if you've already taking the Lord's Supper today, uh, it can just be a little uh, message, uh, but if you haven't and you're waiting for this, we will um, pray for, for, for the, the Lord's Supper and, and the, the uh, portions of it, but I uh, just wanted to give you a couple of things to think about for a moment or two. So, um, if you... Imagine with me a situation, a sort of an impossible situation right now, but, but just uh, play pretend with me for a moment. Imagine uh, if you were to run into Jesus and not having ever met him before or ever seen him uh, face to face before, how would you know it's him? I don't know if that's a question you've ever thought of. Uh, but I think it's worth thinking of for a few minutes tonight. How would you recognize him? How would you know it's him, not having been an eyewitness to him before? Well, it's interesting. That situation sort of did happen in the first century. And particularly after Jesus was crucified and then raised. And... You know, after the crucifixion, for instance, Mary, how did she recognize Jesus? She recognized him, if you look back at the story, by his voice. And then there were some disciples that were walking to a little place called Emmaus, walking away from Jerusalem, sort of downcast and dejected, and and they met this man and uh, did not recognize him at first, so all the common things you might look for as far as recognition, they didn't pick up on. They finally recognized Jesus when he broke bread and prayed. And then there was a time where there was this group of fishermen uh, worn out from a long night of fishing and uh, unsuccessful in their night, and they recognized Jesus by a miraculous catch of fish that he made possible for them. When Jesus wanted to be recognized among his disciples, the first thing uh, the Bible says he did was to show his scars to them. Uh, John chapter 20 is one place where we see this. You know, he didn't uh, point at his face and say, look, it's me. Uh, he, he showed them his hands and his feet and his side and, and the scars. And he said, look, it's me. Jesus is known by his scars. And then on sort of the other end of history, John writes in the book of Revelation, and he's, he's very unhappy as he writes this in Revelation 5 because he witnesses this scene where there's, a, there's this very important document 
a scroll it's called, uh, that no one can open. And he's weeping because no one can open it. He understands how important the contents are to be revealed and no one can get it open. And this is told about in John, in, uh, by John in Revelation 5. I just want to read 10 verses there. Verse 1, Then I saw in the right hand of him who was seated on the throne a scroll written within and on the back, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the scroll and break its seals? No one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll and look into it. And I began to weep loudly because no one was found worthy to open the scroll or to look into it. And one of the elders said to me, Weep no more. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah and the root of David has conquered so that he can open the scroll and its seven seals. And between the throne... And the four living creatures and among the elders, I saw a lamb standing as though it had been slain with seven horns and with seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. And he went and took the scroll from the right hand of him who was seated on the throne. When he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders and, and all fell down before him each holding a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song, saying, Worthy are you to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slain, and by your blood you ransomed people for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. And you have made them a kingdom and priests to our God, and they shall reign on the earth. It's incredible, that story, so many things about it. But, um, you know, again, John crying because no one can open this special scroll. And, and he's t told suddenly by an elder in the heavenly assembly there, don't weep. Look, the, the lion of the tribe of Judah. And then John looks. Imagine what happens. He's told, look, the lion of the tribe of Judah. And John looks, and he doesn't see a lion. He sees a lamb. And the lamb is injured. It's wounded. He knows who the lamb is because of its scars. You see, Jesus, again and again, is known by his scars. When we stand in his presence one day, he's not going to point at his face. We talk about seeing him face to face, and that'll be wonderful, but we will recognize him by his scars. There's a passage in the book of Galatians, one of Paul's letters. Uh, sixth chapter of Galatians where he uh, talks about this idea in fact he says you think I'm legit or not if you think I'm legit base it on the fact that I bear on my body the scars of Jesus and so this translates to his followers like us we should be known as well in this way and so you know, on the Lord's Day, when we remember his body and we remember the blood he shed, we're remembering you know, his wounds and, and his scars and their power to heal us and what they mean to us. Jesus is known by his scars. For those of you who haven't had opportunity yet today to, to take the emblems and and remember these things. We're going to give you an opportunity, uh, a few moments here to do that as, as we pray. Let's, let's remember first uh, the body of Jesus, which is represented by the bread that we partake of. Let's bow. Holy Father, thank you for the day, for an opportunity 
in whatever way to gather as people who have faith that is similar and united in you and to remember your son and what he did for us. This is his day. It is the Lord's day. And we remember today his body given for us that we may have life. We ask that this bread that we consume uh, be spiritual life to us and that it be the reminder of what he gave. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's also rejoice and give thanks for the blood. O Lord, thank you that your son and you were willing to sacrifice everything to the point of shedding of blood, which in our faith we haven't even done. But we're so thankful for Jesus' blood, which washes our sins away. Help us to remember it as we take the cup and may this again be spiritual strength to us as we live this week for you. Thank you for loving us and showing us. In Jesus we pray. Amen. So again, God's blessings on you today. Thank you for uh, tuning into this and, and participating in it. We're glad we have this forum to be able to do do this. And uh, we look forward to getting back together face to face next week. But uh, hope you'll seek out ways that you can can uh, shine forth the good news this week to all those you come in contact with. And before we finish. Let's, let's thank our God one more time. Oh God, thank you for hearing us and, and blessing us, caring for us. We want to be a blessing to others. And please show us those that you expect us to touch this week with the good news of Jesus. Thank you for um, this day where we are to remember you and your son and for a few moments in your word this evening. Pray your blessings on each one who is watching and thinking about these things and all those who will. Uh, please strengthen them. And we ask your hand be on all those who are struggling for whatever reason, uh, that you can encourage them and we can be a source of strength to them as well. Thank you for your love in Christ. We pray today in his name. Amen. You all take care. Good to see you. And uh, we look forward to getting back together soon. God bless.